Cisco Certified Network Associate, day one. Welcome back everybody. I am Imran Rafai, your trainer for this entire series. Today we would be starting with network fundamentals. And when I say fundamentals, we would deal with the very, very basic of the networking industry. So this video ideally is not only for the people who are going for the CCNA certification, but anybody who is interested to or looking to start a career in networking, feel free to watch this because you are going to learn a lot. But CCNA as a certification, it's a very, very valuable certification and I urge everybody to go ahead and take that certification because it is going to add a lot of value. Before I go any further, I would ask everybody to concentrate on the first three days of our video because we would be covering a lot of very, very basic concepts which if I can dare, I would say it is going to be the base of your entire networking career, maybe even 20 years from now. So please concentrate and uh, be clear with every concept we cover here. And in case you still have doubts, please feel free to email me at imran.rafai at nwking.org. That is I M R A N dot R A F A I at N W King dot O R G. All right, without further ado, let us get into our video. Let's start with the very basic question What is a network? Well, whenever I ask this question to my students, more often than not, I get answers like Facebook, Twitter, Picasa, whatever, whatever that you see here on the screen. But, well, that is social network. That's not the network we are here to learn. And that definitely is not the network I am going to talk about. What I am interested in is this network, the network between computers. Well, this network is also the foundation or the base on which applications like Twitter, Facebook, Picasa, whatnot, is built on so we will learn about this network and maybe if we have time over the course of this this series we will also talk a little bit about those applications here and there right when I was preparing for this uh, this video lecture I was preparing this uh, image that you see in the screen and I was thinking okay let me see how do I explain this concept to students who are starting on the networking industry. So how do I explain this concept without actually using a lot of technical terms or saying, okay, this thing communicates with that thing over this thing. I mean, it, it, it was difficult. And, and then I thought, okay, I need a better way to explain this. And I, I remembered a story that a teacher of mine told me when she taught me networking. It's about the olden days of how kings exchanged messages with the ally. Um, they would pass the message to a messenger who used to ride on horsebacks and they used to go through all these, you know, the paved path along the roads and then they, they used to go through the, the city gates and then uh, they used to go to the other king and, you know, deliver the message. So if you compare that to a computer network, the the messenger sending the message so the message is like the data that you send you know data could be anything it could be a, a doc file a word document or it could be an excel file it could be an image it could be a video it could be anything the data and the road on which the the messenger traveled that that basically is the network of course <laughs> computer network is much more interesting than just paving roads uh, but if you if you see that is the very reason why computer network is invented to communicate between computers now if you see this image you would see let me just take a, a highlighter you will see that we have the Windows PC we have Linux systems an iMac and we have a laptop mobile phone palm top you have web servers maybe it's running on CentOS 
you have database servers file servers but in spite of they all running on different operating systems they all can communicate absolutely perfectly with each other this is the magic of computer networks the computer network runs on a, a global standard called the OSI models and and the, and things like that which defines clearly what when any manufacturer manufactures uh, a networking device what and how they should communicate with each other so they all know the language of networking and that enables them to communicate with each other let's try to break this a little more further and see how internet works so if you look at the picture on your screens this is the very basic network two computers connected with a wire in this case we will use a cat5 cable a cat5 cable looks something like this and uh, this has they, they come in different colors you have the blue color ones red color ones I mean this is this is obviously another color and uh, this the outer cover is just a protective layer inside you have eight tiny cables these cables go into a connector called the RJ45 cable that looks something like this that you see in the screen and on the back of your computer and uh, most of the computers that you have today you have a port a, a, a port like this that is your interface your network interface card so your network interface card is where this RJ45 connects and using this you can communicate these two computers can communicate with each other this is the very basic form of networking and this is called as Ethernet E T H E R net Ethernet let me just write it down it's E sorry about my handwriting and it's very difficult to <laughs> write on screen uh, especially with my mouse but let me just Ethernet maybe for my next video I'll buy a, a stylus so that I can just write it more <laughs> legible handwriting alright but for now uh, yeah so this cable connects between these two computers and you can have a very basic network but what happens if you have more than two computers so let's say you have five computers I mean you obviously ca I mean there's one way obviously you can go on adding more net network interface cards on your computer and then you can have but a better way of connecting is by you making use of a networking device maybe a switch or a hub uh, of course switch and hub are two different devices they have totally different functions we will obviously learn about them in future video episodes but uh, for now you know we have a networking device in this case it's a switch and these computers can communicate with each other so for instance this guy is got a word document that he wants to send across the network to this guy all he has to do is send it across to his IP address what is an IP address you would ask IP address is how computers recognize each other on the network we will learn about IP addresses in the next uh, video series but for now just know they are identifiers for computers another critical reason of why people use networking is because of devices like this you know maybe let's assume that this was a very expensive printer or scanner that the company invested in if networking was not available the way this device would be connected is to this okay, let me just change the color just show that it is uh, okay let's use black so this is it would have had to be connected directly to the computer now let's assume that this user maybe prints one page a day and maybe all the users in this compute in this company has similar requirement that they have to print one or two pages every day so the company will have to invest on more printers so you'll have one more printer here this guy will have one more printer so company will have to unnecessarily invest on a lot of printers when the usage of them in all these printers are going to be very very minimal better way for compute uh, companies to invest money on IT infrastructure is to have one compute one printer very expensive good quality printer plug it onto the network and everybody can print to it that's a lot of money saved and that's a very efficient way of using IT budget so that is 
the very basic requirement and the reason why we have computer network so a computer network in a local office you know maybe one home office in a room you know in a single company that's called as a lan local area network and local signifies that it's very local to a geographical area if this same local lands now these are lands and you have another land here and let's assume that your company has two offices one in new york and then you have another office in boston one way you could communicate create a network between the the, the two offices of your company is of course if you had uh, <laughs> the kind of money that is required to cable from new york to boston and of course if you can get the permissions you could run your own private cable from your boston office to your new york office no problem at all but not many companies have that kind of money and not many companies would like to waste that kind of money we have a better way of doing it you know you could connect your office to a local isp isp is nothing but internet service provider and the similar thing happens on the other end boston connects their office to an isp internet service provider and ISPs already have their backbone very massive high bandwidth connections between their offices so your data that you send from here goes through the network through the ISP from ISP to the ISP in Boston and then through that they go back to the Boston office and a computer so this computer can con communicate with this computer absolutely fine using the ISP now this forms the wide area network where lands are interconnected with each other to form a very wide area network and wide here signifies a wide geographical area it could be across the country it could be in different cities in the, in the same country or maybe in different countries basically it's a wan so that is how it works now how how do you connect from isp to your your, your uh, local area network how do you connect to the isp well normal situation what happens is you you get a a jack on the wall you might have a small jack on the wall and your your lan can lan you just connect it to the jack so from your from the switch from the router of your company you connect it to the jack the back end this isp they would lay cable maybe they would lay it under under the uh, ground they lay a cable to their office and from the office they go here from their office again maybe underground they lay a cable to the Boston office again there will be a wall socket that is provided and you just plug a cable from the wall to your your uh, router and that's how your WAN link works well this is also internet because we're using the ISP internet is nothing but a very massive WAN which covers the entire world where you have a lot of public resources so if you google this is the definition of what an internet is a global computer network providing a variety of information and communication facilities consisting of interconnected networks using standardized communication protocols whoa that is a big definition <laughs> well that's exactly what it is you know uh, internet is nothing but you have a lot of vans so you have a van here 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 and then just vans are connected with each other so you have another van here and you have another van here another one here another one here maybe a few more here i know in india <laughs> there are quite a lot you have all these things and they are connected let's for instance you're connected from here it's connected here from here you're connected here these this is connected 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 so this is nothing but how an internet works so for instance if from India somebody has to communicate to New York this is how the data will transfer they will go if this thing disconnects you will have somebody the data going through a longer path so this is what a network internet is it is just nothing but interconnections of a lot of vans let's find out more about the applications we were talking about earlier there are there are a lot of usage of the internet or networking as a whole we have youtube cnn ebay skype this is just very 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 few examples that uh, use the internet but there are 
a lot of sites and applications which use the internet as you already know now how it works is YouTube for instance is owned by Google so Google has put a public server somewhere on the internet that is accessible to anybody on the internet so if I want to watch a video on YouTube I, s I go to my web browser and type www.youtube.com uh, the process that takes place in the background is much more complicated I'm just simplifying this whole process we will look into exactly how it works in further video series but for now when somebody types youtube.com and hit enter my computer sends a HTTP request to YouTube's public server when the server gets that information it says ah fine that's an HTTP request so I send an HTML file back so it creates an HTML file back and it sends that HTML file back to me my web browser takes that and says ah that's an HTML file and I know how to process it so it processes that and your YouTube website comes live and you see that it shows a lot of videos and you click on one of those videos this process repeats they send you back the video and and that's how that works so similarly it happens to eBay you know you go to CNN Skype that's how it works so this is how internet works basically they have a public server they put all the files there your computer requests that they send the file back to you and this is how uh, internet helps you run this global globalized world when we talk about internet very critically we need to talk about the speed of internet before we get into the speed of internet let's get to what is the difference between bit and byte bit is the smallest information computer can understand it's either a zero or a one whereas byte is nothing but form eight, it's formed by eight bits so eight bits together form one byte it could be something like one one zero one 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 zero one whatever something so that's a byte so eight bits form one byte now a lot of people get confused data is always denoted by bytes so when I say I have one GB of RAM it is one gigabyte of RAM but when I tell I have a 10 Mbps connection it is 10 Mbps connection bits per second megabits per second connection if you confuse these two it's going to be very very difficult at one Mbps byte per second connection is 8 Mbps connection I mean 8 times the speed of what it is supposed to be so speed is always denoted by the small b data size is always in big b in in computer world kilo is always 1024 so 1 kilo bit is 1024 bit similarly 1 kilo byte is 1024 byte right so for instance let me see I have a 1 Mbps connection and I have a file of 128k bytes so let's say for instance you have word and in word you type at the alphabet A now with one to, f to produce that one alphabet that takes about one byte capital B of the space so one byte is how much it needs to store this alphabet A so one byte is about it is eight bits right according to the current version so to type a it takes eight bits or one byte of data all right having known that let's look at this example so you have 128 KB that is byte a file a file of 120 K, 128 KB now it needs to go across a network with speed of 1 Mbps 1 megabits per second how much time will it take it's a very simple question let's try to convert 128 kilobyte if we convert into bits it is 128 into 8 th th this conversion if you know bit byte it's 8 right so 1 byte 128 byte is into if you convert it into bits it is 1024 kilobits of data right so 124 kilobits where is that it's here 124 kilobits is nothing but one megabit right one megabit what's the speed it says one megabit per second is the speed of our connection so on a connection of one mbps 
it 1 MB file will take exactly one second so that's what speed is so understand this the difference between speed and data the difference between bit and byte so if you can understand the difference between bit and byte the whole process of understanding further videos is going to be very very easy when we talk about speed we need to also talk about three other critical factors that speed delay and availability the three of them always go hand in hand like for instance now when you connect a cable from your router to your PC it tells you that it's connected at 100 Mbps that's because today our LAN card uh, the maximum they can do is 100 Mbps but then don't forget that speed that they're telling is the speed between your computer and the router your internet connection may be a 1 Mbps connection so if you send 100 Mbps data 100 MB per second data it will not go through your sp uh, internet because your internet can only do 1 Mbps similarly you go the let's say for instance this is your Bangalore office to your New York office we are sending a file so from Bangalore office it goes through a gateway from gateway we have a 1 Mbps slow connection it comes to our Bangalore ISP Bangalore ISP to Mumbai ISP they have a 100 Mbps line very fast and then from Mumbai to Dubai they have a 10 Mbps line a little little slow connection from Dubai again to Cairo they have a 100 Mbps line and then uh, Cairo to Madrid let's say you have a 100 Mbps line so similarly they have a smaller higher different different speeds around the world so basically when I say net to internet this is what happens internet if you if you pull off the cloud it is nothing but a lot of routers jumping here and there now if I even if I have a very high speed connection your data throughput between your Bangalore and New York office will depend on slower connections in between so even if I had a very high speed connection a hundred Mbps line in Bangalore right it can only travel at the slowest link in between so our slowest link is the 10 Mbps line that we have here so from New York office to Bangalore office it will always the maximum it can do is the ten, the one Mbps line that we have in uh, New York so this is how it works so I mean this is not the exact data flow from Bangalore to New York I've just just giving an example it need not always go via Dubai and Cairo maybe it goes to some other other location but basically it actually the, the, the packet data packet flows through one location to another location to another location goes so like I said the speed always depends on different factors of the link speed that you have in between again there's a critical factor is of delay now when I send the data from New York to Bangalore it has to like we already discussed it has to pass through a lot of nodes in between but let's assume that we have another office in Boston I love Boston don't I <laughs> so let's say we have Boston office and uh, we send data from New York to Boston it has to pass through less number of nodes and hence it would reach much more quicker so that's another factor if the distance between the two devices is long you will have delay in the communication and that's why today if you see if you go to Google I mean even google.com for instance or you go to uh, uh, youtube.com they redirect you to a content delivery network closer to your place so if you are in Singapore and you say google.com or you or you go to uh, youtube.com the YouTube would not connect you to the Google server or the YouTube server in the United States it will connect you to a content delivery network close to Singapore maybe in Singapore so that there's there's not much delay or there's insignificant delay in the communication and the, the whole process is much much more fast so that's that's the delay part of it and the availability again for instance the the link between Cairo and Dubai is done communication between New York and Bangalore would not happen or it would happen but then it has to take maybe a longer path you might have another path which goes via Russia and then it comes via uh, you know it goes via China and comes to India and, and it's, it's, it's a long 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 uh, process so that's 
another thing about availability availability is is if all the links in between are up and running another thing we need to discuss in today's uh, video is network topology the network topology there are three fundamental network topology the star topology the ring topology and the bus topology the very very olden ways of how computers were connected but even in today's world they are in use i will show you how now for instance star how does star work star is where all the computers or devices are connected to a central switch or uh, a, a connecting device now if this line goes down it doesn't affect everybody else only this guy goes off the network so in ring for instance every computer is connected to each other so if this guy goes down the communication between these two devices can still happen through this way right so that's how this works now in, in bus topology let's say for instance this is again like that you have a de device here this is connected to this device you have another device here that is going to that so every computer is connected to their own little device right now if the link goes down here this part of the network can communicate with each other but not with another device from the other segment of the network that's how a bus network works let's see how it is implemented in today's world we go back to our old uh, example that we saw earlier in in this video and if you see the switch and these d uh, systems or these PCs are connected in a star formation everybody is connected to this central switch here the server also similar thing happens you know everybody is connected to the switch these devices are connected to the access point in star formation or uh, and you know, so to say and if you look at the switch the switch is connected in a bus formation now if the link goes down here this part of the network can communicate with each other but it cannot communicate with anybody else from this part of the network uh, sometimes you might even have networks where this is connected like this and this is connected like this so even if this goes down the switch can still access this network around this path and they can you know get access to these these windows I mean these systems here so in to in real world the network topology that we use is called hybrid which makes use of the star and the ring and maybe uh, even uh, the bus so it's a combination of all the three or either of them and uh, that's how it is so it is a hybrid network that we use in today's world I think that is about all the information that I wanted to uh, speak about in this first video we will further get into a lot of other topics in our second video this is the review of what we did today um, go through all the uh, topics that is mentioned here and see if you understood any if you didn't you can always go back and s try to learn a little bit more and even after that if you have confusion if you want more clarity on any topic please feel free to write into imran.rafai at nwking.org and uh, I will look into it and I will answer your queries and of course subscribe to our YouTube channel and you can keep getting all our videos live on YouTube Thank you for watching and uh, please visit our website. Bye.